In this video, I'll show you step-by-step step how I built this Dutch bucket system. If you want to know how the system works, stick around to the end of the video and I'll explain. In the meantime, let's start building. For this build, I'm using a 27 gallon tote as a reservoir. It's 14 and a quarter inches tall, so I'm going to make my stand 18 and a half inches tall to provide plenty of room for the drain pipe. My buckets are 10 and a half inches wide at the bottom, so I'm going to make the stand 11 and a half inches deep so that I'll have enough room to mount the feed lines behind the buckets. Finally, I'm using three buckets. The end buckets will be eight inches on center from the end of the stand. And then I want to have 16 inches on center between each bucket. That equals 48 inches in total. Now I know my stand is going to be 18 and a half inches tall, 11 and a half inches deep and 48 inches wide. Time to start cutting. If you want me to turn this project into a downloadable PDF, let me know in the comments. I can include material lists, cut sheets, and diagrams, totally free. I'll post it up as an article on my website, but I'm not gonna do it unless I know that you're interested. So if you want it, make sure you leave a comment. I start out by pre-drilling and countersinking all the screw holes so that I don't split any wood whenever I actually drive the screws in. A speed square is helpful to make sure that you're building each leg square so, you know, so the whole stand doesn't fall over. You'll notice here that I didn't originally install the center 2x4 across the top of the stand. As I was building the system, I noticed the bucket started to kind of sag in the middle, so I went ahead and added the 45-inch center piece. To hold the drain pipe in place, I'm using two rigid conduit straps. Don't use EMT straps, they're a different size and they don't fit rigid pipe like PVC. I normally buy one hole straps, but all I could find this time was two hole, so I cut one tab off with the grinder. To install the straps, I position the strap how it's going to be mounted on the stand, and then I just make a mark with a screw. I'll run this screw in just a little bit so that it's easier to get everything screwed together once I have the strap in my hand too. Before I tighten everything up all the way, I'll go ahead and put the drain line in place. On the end closest to the reservoir, I drop the strap down about half an inch so the drain water gravity flows back into the reservoir. Here I'm marking the center line for each bucket, then I'll transcribe that mark onto the drain pipe so I know where to drill the holes for the bucket drains. This is a useful way to get a straight line across a length of PVC. I'm drilling holes for the drain lines using a three quarter inch hole saw. Once the holes are drilled, I clean them up with a deburring tool, and then I make sure that a three quarter inch pipe will fit in the holes. Now I reinstall the drain pipe, cap it, add an elbow, and make sure it's centered on the stand. I'm using half inch irrigation tubing for my feed line, but before I use it, I want to straighten out the section that's going to be on top of the stand. To do this, I slide a 3 8 wooden dowel into the tubing and heat it up with a heat gun until I trip the breaker. Then I let it cool down before I remove the dowel. Next, I add an irrigation cap with a clean out to the end of the tubing. The clean out makes it easy to flush the tubing whenever you start to clean your system. To secure it to the stand, I use half inch EMT conduit straps. Make sure you leave enough slack tubing to connect to your pump. And there's that centerboard I forgot to add in the beginning. To make the Dutch buckets, I use a half inch rubber grommet. These grommets are made to fit half inch PVC, which has an outer diameter of three quarters of an inch, making this grommet the perfect fit for three quarter inch barbed fittings. There's a link to these grommets in the description. Half inch PVC elbows will also friction fit onto these elbows, and I'll explain why that's useful in a minute. To make the drain connection, I heat up a piece of three quarter inch PEX and slide one end of the elbow into it. You want the bucket to always hold one to two inches of water before it starts to drain. To account for that, I measure two inches and make a mark. Use a one inch hole saw and drill where you made your mark. Install the grommet and then push the elbow through the grommet. That's a tight fit, so hold the back side of the grommet with your free hand. I set the buckets on the stand and then mark where I want to cut the PEX so that they fit down in the drain pipe without clogging it. These orange lids don't do a very good job of blocking light, so I decided I'd give this one a few shots of paint. First, I added two coats of high solids primer, followed by a couple coats of my favorite green spray paint. Did you notice how much light that primer blocked? 
Now that the lid's ready, I cut the drain pipe to final length and mark holes for the drain and feed lines. I cut oversized holes in the lid so it's easy to remove the drain elbow when I need access to the reservoir. On the pump, I install a half inch barbed tubing connector because it fits the half inch irrigation line better than the fittings that come with the pump. Next, I'm gonna grab a hole saw that's a little bit larger than the plug on the pump and drill a hole in the top side of the tote for the cord to pass through. I'm using the AAPW250 pump from Active Aqua. It's a 250 gallon per hour pump. That's kind of overkill for a system this small. I've used 160 gallon per hour pumps in similarly sized systems before and they work great. You just need a pump that can provide enough flow rate to each bucket at the head height of your system. To make the feed lines for each bucket, I cut small sections of quarter inch irrigation tubing and connect a valve and a barbed connector to them. Then I add another section of quarter inch tubing long enough to reach into the bucket. Next, I'll punch two holes in the feed line for each bucket. Once the holes are punched, I connect all the feed lines. I add a half inch PVC elbow inside each bucket to help limit clogs and to limit hard edges the paint strainer could tear on. I'm using paint strainers as a filter so perlite doesn't drain down into the reservoir. If you're building a larger system with more buckets, it's cheaper to cut up the paint strainer and zip tie pieces of it directly to each drain. Next, I pop off the drain elbow and open up the reservoir so I can fill it and add air stones. I drill two quarter inch holes on the side of the reservoir for the air lines and then connect the air stones. This 7.8 liter per minute air pump is a little undersized for a reservoir this big, but it was the last one that I had. Otherwise, I would look for, you know, like a 15 liter per minute pump for a reservoir this size. All right, let's test the system out. I wanna check and make sure nothing's leaking. So there's no leaks and all the feed lines seem to have similar flow rates, which is a good thing. This pump's also strong enough to push drip irrigators if that's more your style. You can adjust these emitters to deliver anywhere between zero to 10 gallons per hour per emitter. And this pump will easily push six emitters. But for me, I normally just adjust the flow rates with the valves on each line and stick the line straight into the media, but go with whatever you prefer. For media, I normally go with coarse perlite. You can buy large bags like this from local farm co-ops or garden centers, but big box stores usually don't carry bulk bags. Also, perlite dust is not healthy to breathe, so pour it outside. I normally add it to a fabric pot, then soak it to rinse off the dust before I add the perlite into my system. I fill the buckets to within about two inches from the top of the bucket, and then I cover the perlite with expanded clay because the expanded clay will help limit algae growth. If you're using lids, you can cut them in whatever configuration works best for you. If I'm growing something like peas or beans, then I use a two-hole lid like this since I'll be growing two plants in each bucket. Then I place holes for the feed lines fairly close to each plant. Would you look at that? Thanks to the magical powers of YouTube, we've built a fully functioning Dutch bucket system in less than 10 minutes. If you made it this far into the video, thanks for sticking with me. Let's talk for just a second about how a Dutch bucket system works. It's really simple. You start out with a reservoir. Inside the reservoir, you've got a pump. That pump pushes nutrient solution up a feed line that drips or flows into your Dutch bucket, filters through your media, and collects down at the bottom of the bucket. Down at the bottom of the bucket is a drain line. Whenever the water level in the bucket reaches that drain line, it's gonna start flowing through the drain down into your drain tube that's angled towards your reservoir so it gravity flows all of that drain water back into your reservoir so it can be recirculated. One thing to think about is the media that you use in a Dutch bucket system. You don't want something that's super absorptive. That's why I like using coarse perlite. It holds a little moisture, but then again, you've always got that one to two inches of water in the bottom of the bucket. So it's constantly slowly wicking some of that moisture back up into the perlite and your root system is growing down towards that moisture. That little reserve of water is really nice to have in case of a pump failure. Your plants are still gonna stay healthy for you know three or four days while you're waiting to get a new pump. 
Also, if you do have a pump failure, it's super simple to manually water your plants in this kind of system. You'll just dump nutrient solution into the bucket, you know, two or three times a day, and it's gonna stay in that reserve at the bottom of the bucket, and your plants are gonna stay healthy indefinitely like that. In the video, obviously I used Blue Lowe's buckets and I know some of you are probably just dying to comment that I should have used black buckets. And yeah, that's totally true. Black buckets do a way better job of blocking light than blue buckets or other color buckets. But Lowe's didn't have black buckets and I want to make these videos where it's easy for you, the viewer, to go out and find the things that I use. So I don't want to special order black buckets if you can't go down to the local big box store and find black buckets. If you can find black buckets, use them. One of the best things about a Dutch bucket system is that you can use it to grow big plants. Not only big plants, you can grow long-term plants. This squash that you're looking at has been growing in that same system for over six months and it still puts on new fruit every week. It's not showing any signs of slowing up. So I'm gonna see just how long I can keep it going. One last thing that I wanna say, don't think that just because I used something in this video that you have to have the same exact thing to make your Dutch bucket system work. I mean, hydroponics is all about improvisation. Find new ways to do things. Use the material that you have or that you can scavenge or scrounge and make a system that you're gonna enjoy. With that said, I've listed most of the materials and tools that I used in this video in the description just to make it easier for you to find out what some of those things were. If this video was helpful, hit the like button. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to my channel. If you've got questions, ask them in the comments. That's all I've got, so I'll see you next time.